Okay, citizens, we got a special treat for you right now. I didn't say this. I, 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 you know, we like to we like to surprise them, Heather B. Of course. You know, our, our audience runs vast and wide all across the world. Yes. You're going to appreciate this. A lot of folks from all over the world who are tuned into the show wish they could be at the Grammys. You got to work. You, you know, you're not able. You couldn't make it here. So we're bringing the Grammys to you live on the air. Mm-hmm. Right now, I got the man who has more Billboard number one hits than any other songwriting team, him and his brother, Terry Lewis. In the game, let me name off some of his wow. accolades. Have to be how many Grammy Awards? Only five, five Grammy Only Awards. Five. That I, when I read that, oh. I, I didn't believe it, so I didn't want to say it. Five Grammy Awards. They're among a handful of producers that have number one records in three consecutive decades: the eighties, the nineties, the two thousands. Um, they own on um, they earn more than one hundred gold, platinum, multi platinum, and diamond albums for their work. Wow. Michael Jackson, Sheesh. Janet Jackson, Boys to Men, Mary J, Mar- Mariah Carey, New wow. Edition, Herb Albert, Yolanda Annals, uh, Luther Vandross, Earth Wind and Fire, TLC, Robert Palmer, Gwen Stefani, Kanye West, the list goes sway in the morning. The yeah. list goes on and on and on. Please welcome the one and only Jimmy Jam. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Wow. I almost wow. lost my breath. Man. All right. Thank you. And good right. night. Thank you, man. <laughs> how, okay. So I got to ask you, man. Um, the Grammys back in New York. Man, how cool is that? What I'm the so hell? excited. I'm what, so excited. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, I love it. Who are you? Cardi B. Let's talk about some of these oh, artists. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about it. Okay. Jeez. Yeah. This is this. First of all, it's, it feels like the Grammys don't, don't don't have that diversity issue as much that it that, that people <laughs> complained about a couple of years ago. Would you agree? Well, you, here's here's the thing, yeah. I, and it's not a it's not a short answer, unfortunately. But yeah. but what it is is now the Grammys just like the Oscars. Mm-hmm. It's a membership organization, mm-hmm. meaning that the members are the ones that are doing the voting, as opposed to a popular vote. Uh-huh. It's the people that do the craft voting for other people that do the craft. So now it would be just like if you were voting on radio people, yeah. you'd be looking for something different than somebody, oh, he's the most popular DJ. You'd mm-hmm. be like, no, no, this dude knows his stuff. Absolutely. Right? So when you look at the Grammys a lot of time, you have to look at it like that. Now, my whole thing, I, now 10 years ago, I was the chairman of the Grammys. Now, I remember this. So my whole thing was about diversity and about making the membership represent more representative of what the music industry was. Uh-huh. And 10 years after that, I think you're seeing that happen because there's more influence from R&B, there's more influence from hip hop, and what you're seeing is people actually get involved, actually voting uh-huh. for, you know, because it's tedious to do that, man. The voting thing is crazy because just in like record of the year category, there could be like 800 different records. Yeah, mm-hmm. You go yeah. really listen to all that and figure out, you know, mm-hmm. what it is. But now people are being a little more conscious about it. You know, I, I got a shout out to my boy Questlove. You know, there's people like that that are getting involved that are saying, hey, man, you control this mm-hmm. because it's only about 14,000 voting members. Yeah, yeah. Right. So now when you look and you look at the diversity of the categories, a lot of it is because we've been we, our folks, have been active in actually telling that story, putting those votes down, filling out the paperwork the way you're supposed to uh-huh. do it. And you're seeing a result of it. So it's kind of like politics in a sense, totally. in a political field where people might complain or want to see change with their representation, but aren't going to the polls to vote. That's exactly what okay, it is. Okay, so well, th- well, think about remember. I mean, this is a while back, but you remember the Neptunes? Yes. Yeah. There was a year that there was like it was their year. Of course. They weren't nominated, and so the story was, mm. man, the Grammys messed up and whatever. But later on, it came out that they never submitted. They never submitted their application. Wow. You have to submit an application. Wow. We don't wow. hear that part. Yeah. yeah. If you're a member, they're members, so they can enter themselves in, into the into the process. Or their manager can do it, or their record company can do it. Or, you, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. what happened was a lot of that kind of thing was going on, and unfortunately the story is, oh, the Grammys messed up. But, you know, what we I tried to say is, no, the Grammys is us. Mm. We're the members. Remember. So, so we got to vote, and we got to make sure that the things we want to see there get there. Wow. So recently we saw Q-Tip from Tribe Called Quest come out yep. and say, why isn't this last Tribe Called Quest album even right. nominated? Right. It, is that one of the, could that so be that, so that So what I would say to that is, that's fine. There's five records in each uh, category. Okay. What would you take out to put Tribe in? Uh, See, that's, 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 what what say. Say. Yeah. that's what I'd say. That's what I'd say. If if Tribe, if, if you were doing a top 10 list of albums, uh-huh. Tribe is probably in there. Yeah. What if they're number six? So there's five other albums in there. 
You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, what, it's what, like. What are the albums? Let me see. Well, that, you got that for album, rap album do you for have? album. So okay. you got Ke- you got Kendrick, which is obvious. Okay. Yeah, you got Jay Z, uh-huh. which is obvious. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I think we have. I think the wild card in there might be uh, Tyler the Creator. Might be the wild card that's in that. A damn good album. And yeah. that's an amazing yeah. album. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and and the thing that happens too is that remember. There's uh, committees that look at all of this stuff, Mm -hmm. and they actually listen to every album. And I got to tell you, when you're sitting in a room and you're listening to all the albums back to back, Uh there's things that pop out that are amazing that you go, man, I didn't know this record was like this. You know what I'm saying? And that's what happens. So it's a very educated voting body. Um, The other thing I would say to to Tip is that um, remember, Tribe was on the Grammys last year. Yeah, and there's a lot of people that would be going, "Well, what are you complaining about? You actually got to perform on the show." Yeah, you know, which yeah. in many ways is just as relevant uh, than than getting the actual nomination. So I don't think that part. I think he feels like it was a mutually beneficial, right. uh, you know, uh, uh, thing. Him them performing for the Grammys, mm-hmm. them yeah. being there for the Grammys, and the yeah. Grammys having them perform. I think he felt like that was mutually beneficial. Well, no, yeah. I think it is mutually. Yeah. No, it absolutely is mutually beneficial. But my point is that listen, if you got five of anything, mm-hmm. whoever's sixth, <laughs> and, and not saying they're sixth, we don't know. It, but that's just that's just okay. the reality. Of okay, it. so Jay Z, four four four, Kendrick's Dam, Migos, Culture, yep. Rhapsody, uh, Layla's Wisdom, yep. uh, Tyler, Flower Boy. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, maybe so, then this is a matter of maybe going yeah. from five to seven or five to right. increasing the number. Showing the honorable mentions. Uh, well, if there's <laughs> if there's a t- what happens is that there can be six in a category if there's a tie. Oh, OK. You can definitely do that. Oh. But the thing but the other thing that happens is, um, you know, of course, when you increase the number, what you begin to do is maybe dilute the importance oh. of it. The exclusivity of it, okay. because okay. it is supposed to be. I think the Grammys is a very kind of exclusive thing. Now, by exclusive, I don't mean it shouldn't be inclusive. Yeah. Mm. So you should have the chance to do anything. But there's always going to be. I mean, that's what it is. If it's five, we expand it to seven. I mean, to me, it's like think about the. Uh, I don't know. Are you a college football fan, right? Yeah, so you yeah, get down yeah. to the playoffs, the four teams that should be there, and you got Alabama, and people going, "Man, Alabama shouldn't be there," because you know, so on and so forth, and then they go on and win the the whole thing, the right? Uh-huh. Um, so they're saying, well, maybe we should expand it to eight. Well, when you expand it to eight, number nine is going to be mad. Okay. You expand it to sixteen, number seventeen is going to be mad. I mean, okay. that's that's just how it how it happens, but. Um, uh, well, this is so fun. Huh? This we got, is such a good combo. <laughs> Jimmy Jam is here. You know him, Jimmy Jam and oh Terry Lewis. Uh, go ahead, Heather. Really quickly, um, they all know in here, like, my go-to song is No More Drama by Mary J. Oh, Blige. Oh, thank you so like, much. I just love that song. It's my inspiration. If you could paint the picture a little bit, because none of us had the opportunity to sit in the studio with you and create, what was that like, and how did you know, like, this is it? Well, Mary J, that particular song, first of all, I, I start out by saying I was the biggest Mary J fan ev- of all time. Wow. Um, I'm sure we have a fan club, club. together for yeah. her, yeah. Heather. <laughs> um, you know what I'm saying? But 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 when I, I swear to God, when she first came up uh, to, to work with us back in the back a long time ago, this is right when the My Life album came out. Mm-hmm. I thought the My Life album was an absolute masterpiece. Yeah. And I couldn't imagine what the heck are you calling us for? After doing that record, ain't you gonna, you know, get down with, you know, Puff and Chucky Thompson and dudes that did that record? And she said, I ain't working with them no more. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I said, okay. I said, okay, cool. And she said, well, what? I, we said, what do you want the record to sound like? She said, I want the record to sound like me. And we said, okay, cool. So we thought about, well, what does Mary J sound like to us? And we had this Rick James sample that we looped, and it ended up becoming Love Is All We Need. And I remember when we played it for her, she started dancing around the studio. She said, yeah, this sounds like me. This is what I'm talking about. And we said, oh, you like that? And we had this other song called uh, Beautiful. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, uh, not Beautiful, but uh, Everything. Yeah, Everything. Everything. Oh, Everything was yeah. okay. joined. Right? Ooh. So we, she heard that, and she said, oh, yeah, no, that's my thing. So that we, we had a great relationship. So No More Drama, when we wrote No More Drama, it was actually for, I want to say it was for the Mary album. Uh-huh. Wow. And I mem- and we played it for we had the whole thing done lyrics and whole thing we told her, we told her you can switch the lyrics up if you want to you know make it however you want it and we played it for her and she said I'm not changing a, a, a single note of this she said you've been following me around with like uh, private detectives or something because uh-huh. this is exactly where I'm at right now in my life wow. but she said I'm not ready for it for this album, but my next album is gonna be my mm. title track, right? And I thought, wow, really? Okay, cool. So 
that whole year went by and she kept going, you didn't give that song away, did you? And I said, no, that song is for you, girl. That's your song, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. And then when she went in and actually sang it, she didn't change a note. She didn't change a word. And wow. that's like her signature song. And actually, speaking of Grammys, that performance of No More Drama on yeah. the Grammy to Ooh, me is one of the all-time all -time greatest. And, I, and um, you know, that was, I had a hand in that. I, that was my suggestion to the committee uh -huh. to have her perform. And they said, hey, what? They say, well, what kind of production do we need? What kind of whatever? I said, you don't need anything. Just put her on the stage and let her do her thing. And I remember in the rehearsal, uh -huh. she shut it down at the rehearsal. So, like, oh, damn. Everybody was stuck. It was like a movie, right? You know, you see a movie when somebody gets on the stage and everybody just stage hands are just doing their thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. Dude with the mop. And all of a sudden, everybody's stopping. And now they're just staring at the stage. That's yes. what she did that day. That's what she And did. it was like, man, I felt so vindicated because I was like, I went out for my girl and she did her thing. She just Powerful. got a star on the Walk of Fame. Yes, she did. And I was did. with her and she Absolutely. shouted us out, man. It was wow. so beautiful. Dope. So beautiful. Mary J. Oh, we got Jimmy Jam from Flight Time here. You know Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Can we please talk about the cultural phenom that was and is Janet Jackson? Absolutely we can. I would love to know, and I don't know if this actually happened in real life, but say Janet came to you for advice, your opinion, your POV on whether she should go on the Super Bowl stage with Justin Timberlake mm -hmm. after all the controversy that's transpired. Mm -hmm. What would you say? No. Huh. Really? Elaborate. Well, I would say, you know, you have to figure out what would be the reason that you would want to do it. Like, what do you have to gain from it? We know what... Justin has the game for him. Uh -huh. He's got a new record coming out. Yeah, It's the ultimate promotion for him. It makes all the sense in the world for, for him to do it. Um, Janet's got a baby that just turned one. Uh -huh. She just sent me some beautiful pictures uh -huh. of, of him, which uh, Issa, which is amazing. Uh -huh. And I, to me, I as a parent with a new baby, I'd stay home and enjoy my baby because I don't have a project coming out at least not right now. Uh -huh. I just finished doing a whole state of the world tour. So I don't really have a reason if I'm Janet, I think. Vindication though? What who vind how vindication how? You know, I mean, she took a lot of heat, you oh, know. Oh, she totally did. And you know. she No, she absolutely took a lot of heat, but that doesn't vindicate. I mean, who First of all, to me it just it doesn't it doesn't fix anything. Okay. Now, I put it like this. If he invited her to, mm. to do something, then I would certainly say, well, by all means, consider, I guess, you know, whatever. But at the end of the day, I just don't know what she has to gain from it. She's she's put it, she's moved on. That's mm -hmm. Janet Jackson, yo. She's moved on. That's Janet Jackson. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's Janet. She's, she's good. She just wrecked um, it. I don't know if you else saw the State of the World tour. She moved on. She she, moved she's on. like yep. talking, she's talking about relevant issues mm -hmm. right now and being a strong black woman and. Um, doing her thing and doing what all strong black women do. They get through it. They Come get on. through it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what she does, and she does it by example every day. So there, to me, you don't have to go back to that. And you do it, and forget that. If the Super Bowl wants to make it up to her or wants her back, then ask her to perform. There you go. Right. All right, Jimmy right. Jam. And interesting enough, she's been so on point, so tuned in to what's going on around her, especially in the right. music scene. It went viral when she was reciting lyrics to Bodak Yellow. Yes, you know yes, that was <laughs> with, awesome. With Car that with was Cardi awesome. B. Yeah. What, what, is, what, is, what is, you, you see, you know, people say to me, man, you've seen a lot of people come and go, but I haven't seen as many people as Jimmy Jam. Cardi B, man, what do you make of this beautiful phenomenon that's taking place in, her, in the story her. that yeah. she has? You yeah. know? What do you think of it? I absolutely love her because she's so honest and she's so real. And to me, she is such an artist of today. And by that, I mean uh, because of social media uh -huh. and the way that artists are out there and, you know, their brand or whatever you want to call it. It never feels to me, though, like she's thinking about a brand. It just mm. always feels like she's just doing her. Yeah. Because, you know, you'll see her one day and she'll be, you know, all glammed up and doing her thing. And then you see her the next day and she's just like laying in bed. I'm sick, y'all. <laughs> you know? And her honesty and, and her rawness is absolutely amazing. And, um, and she's inspiring, too. That's the other thing. It's, uh -huh. it's interesting because I know Bruno uh, really well. And I know... Bruno sees someone like Cardi and just goes, oh, I got this idea. Uh -huh. We got to do this song together. We got to do this remix or whatever. 
certain artists just inspire, and I think that's what it is that she she does. She just has that aura that inspires people. I can't wait to see her on the Grammy stage. That's going to be oh, amazing. Man. And, yeah, man, and and she and she inspires so many little young girls yes. and oh, just yeah. young youth in general. Yeah. Yes, you know, with that honesty and that Absolutely. trajectory and how smart she's been and yep. kind of cultivating her career. Mm-hmm. Now, to me, that's yeah. the other thing. She yeah. hasn't rushed doing stuff like there's always seems to be so much pressure to oh you got to follow it up you got to do whatever mm-hmm. and to me she's just taking the right time and, and the right steps and making the right records and doing the right thing and so i'm i can, i couldn't be a bigger fan i absolutely love her bruno mars I often say that in my opinion the, the two best stage shows going on on the planet that i've seen um for uh current artists has been beyonce yep and bruno mars yeah who else would you throw in there uh, nobody. I mean, okay. well, no, I mean, um, no, no, listen, Bruno, Bruno, when you talk about, when you talk about actual entertainment, mm-hmm. now Bruno's blueprint is the time yeah. and prints and things that we did. Mm-hmm. And he's just basically just taking it to a next level, which is to me what each generation is supposed to do. That's why records get broken, why people continue to rise higher and higher, because, you know, you stand on the shoulders of those below you. So I think that what he's done is he as not only as an entertainer, but just think about his album. Like I love his album. Like he did nine songs, yeah, right? Like, yeah. like that's like back in the old days we yeah. used to do like nine songs. Uh-huh. And the reason records used to be nine songs is because on a vinyl you could only get about forty five minutes, so yeah. that's all you could do is like nine songs. Yeah. But he's <laughs> taking it back there. But he's gonna make sure each one of them nine songs is amazing, rather than put fourteen songs or fifteen songs on something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He just has such an old school spirit, but he also has that spirit where he wants to entertain you. He wants to please you when he comes out and his his band is the same way. Um, so, I mean, I think he's he's amazing. I, I would, well, I I don't have to pay to see him, but I would pay to see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, did Jimmy yeah. Jam <laughs> Sway, I don't have to pay, Sway. You know I don't have, I don't have to pay. pay. <laughs> if you, yeah, I would, though. And right. at the same time, you know, Bruno Mars, Beyonce, these are anomalies. Um, but while you look at the musical landscape, yeah. there's like an assembly line of artists that all sound the same. So I'm curious on your thoughts with just how younger generations absorb music. Yeah. Well, I have a 17 year old, well, I have 17 year old twins, but my son is very music centric. He's like me uh, when I was 17. Um, he just hasn't, well, maybe he has. I was going to say he hasn't found his Terry Lewis yet, but maybe <laughs> he has. He's actually, uh, him and Frank Ocean's little brother are, are best friends and, and buddies, and they make music together. Cool. So okay. that's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's interesting listening because there's a lot of things that sound the same, but it's interesting to him, things don't sound the same, right? So if I listen to, let's say he plays, uh, we were just talking about the, the uh, Grammy nomination. So we talk about Migos, and what a yeah. phenomenon Migos is as a group and and individually too i mean they're like a super group right now so um you listen to that or he'll tell me we'll listen to um you know metro boomin yeah and he'll immediately go oh yeah metro boomin did that and it's like how can you tell because it's to me it sounds a lot of it sounds the same i can tell the quality i think metro's quality is amazing yeah but i can't tell a lot of times the nuances but it's the same way my parents were like about our music yep. growing up. Mm-hmm. Wow. They'd say, you know, you take a bunch of artists and you just go, oh, they all sound the same. Mm-hmm. And I go, no, they don't sound at all the same, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But we knew because we were kids. So I think the kids get the nuances and the differences in music. So to them, it doesn't all sound the same. You know, it all has a, a different thing. Like he's a big Travis Scott fan, and, and mm-hmm. I am too. Mm-hmm. But he also knows that, like, when um, that Mike Dean, who produces and engineers for mm-hmm. both Travis and Kanye, mm-hmm. Like, that's why they kind of have that same sonic, because uh-huh. it's the, Mike Dean is the guy that holds that glue, that, that holds that together. So he knows, you know, the kids know. So I don't really like to blanket and just go, oh, it all sounds the same, because that's me, that's being old. Yeah. So I try to find those little things where I go, when I hear it now, I'm like, oh, okay, I, I get you it. You get it, right? I get it, yeah. Jimmy Jam is here. Mm-hmm. Um, people throw around the words rock star, living legend. You are that. Nobody has to icon. You are that. Nobody has to question that. With that being said, all the success. I like the living part, by the way. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. I like that better than the legend <laughs> part, quite honestly. No, but you are like the nobody. Part is no, all right. living legend. You. you are, you. and um, we here going in the conversation that you're having. All the success that you had, all the years, what percentage of the songs did you actually write down on paper? Because we debate about this all the time. 
Um, what do you mean, like write lyrics down? Wrote or? the lyrics down, or you just went into the studio and just freestyle, or just spit it out your head, like. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, that's interesting. Now, there's a few different ways because it's me and, and Terry together. Yeah. Now Terry tends to be the more I call him lyric master. Okay. I call him, <laughs> I call him vocal master, and lyric master, and the reason is, as Sway knows, because we talk a lot. Um, I tend to talk really in law in paragraphs. Mm -hmm. I talk okay. long. Terry can take <laughs> something I say and say it in three words, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's his gift. That's, a, that's, 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 that's us. Is that right? Good. Yeah. Heather's okay. you. I'm Terry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, right. And, like, Tra and Tracy's you too, by the way. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. So that so that's kind of that's kind of the thing. So um, uh, so yeah, we would always tend to I if I came up with a melody, let's say, because I I was pretty good at coming up with melodies, and I would do most of the tracks, right? But I'd come up with something, and I'd sing. Not lyrics necessarily, but the way things sounded. Mm. Like mm. if something sounded like a ooh sound or something sounded like, like a, I might do something like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I give that to Terry, and he goes, oh, it sounds like you're saying this. And then mm -hmm. he interprets it, and it actually becomes lyrics. Wow. But you can think about most of the songs we wrote, particularly the Janet songs, they were all just, and Janet called it blackmail tapes back in the day. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'd give her, I'd give her a, I'd give her this blackmail tape, and I say, "Here's the lyric, you know, or whatever." Like I remember, we did uh, "If," mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. bam, and I'll I remember, about this. and I said, and I, we had the track right, and I said, and she said, "What are you hearing? What are you hearing?" And I said, "I'm hearing like some Native American sounding, right." And she comes back the next day, uh, you know, whatever those lyrics are, and she's like singing around, look, look in my eyes, and I don't give a damn, and I, right? And I'm like, oh yeah, okay, yeah, that's it. That's, that's what it. you were saying. That's what it, okay, right? <laughs> wow. So thank goodness there was people that could interpret what the heck was on my mind, mm -hmm. but that was kind of the that was kind of the thing. So yeah, eventually lyrics got written down, but a lot of times the melodies and kind of the feel of what it was was just kind of. That's so crazy. Yeah. Jimmy oh, Jam, man. Thanks I, for I, sharing I, that. Stole yeah. him, I stole him out of the hallway. I know. Uh, so, <laughs> I, know you did. I, know, I know he got stuff to do, I was, man. I was lost. I'm wandering <laughs> around serious <laughs> going, well, oh, where's <laughs> everybody? And we yeah. all <laughs> sitting in here. We turned. We was like, oh, that shit. That that's Jim. We just started waving. We started waving at all. <laughs> uh, man, thank you for giving us some insight. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, Woo. Wow, man. Man. Woo. We're still fans. Everybody in this room is still Thank fans so of this, much, and and, um, and I know. And, and, and who are you? Ex I know you're excited for the whole thing, you know. But yeah. is there anybody? Is it Cardi B? Is it who's the new SZA. person? It's SZA. Oh, we haven't SZA. even talked about SZA. Oh, SZA. Oh, my God. Oh, hold God. On. You got to stay, man. Hold up. SZA. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because and, and shout out to Punch and everybody over there at TDE. Yeah. You know they've done such an excellent job yeah, of yeah. being patient with their yes. artists. Yes. You know, we're in this quick fix, you know, society when it comes to music, they they've taken their time with her. Yes. And at times, SZA was building a foundation before people even understood yes. who she was. Absolutely. You. What are your thoughts on her and and, and her latest project? I I love her. I absolutely love her, and I remember, um, yeah, there, it seemed like, you know, there was a couple things that kind of leaked out, a couple of mixed things, and then it was like, oh no, we're going back in and doing some more stuff, we're going back in and doing some more stuff, and I remember my reaction, you know, everybody remembers their first reaction hearing a certain song, mm -hmm. and when I heard, uh, what was the single, Love Galore, was that the first yeah, one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, I heard that record, and I was like, who is this? Because what it sounded like, like it was almost my appetite got whetted for SZA on the Rihanna record, mm -hmm. right? And so I was like going, and then I saw her perform a couple times and I was like, okay, I can't wait. So when I heard the record, I first thought, wait, is this Rihanna's new record? This is crazy. And then somebody said, no, 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 that's that girl SZA. I said, oh my God. And then I heard Travis Scott come on yeah. and I love Travis Scott and I just was like, oh, this is my record. Yeah. And to this day, that's probably, I mean, my probably my top five of the year. Wow! As far a, as records, that wow, that wow. record is absolutely amazing, and then the album Ooh. that followed uh, is no. just absolutely but, incredible, man. And so it's, it's the full story, though. Yeah, yeah. which a lot of yeah. artists might have a good song. Yes, uh, and yes. some you know, and but they don't have a great album, right? Or they might have a good album, but they don't have a great stage show. Mm. Yes. They might have a good stage show, but they don't brand themselves properly. Yeah, that's right. You know, they don't have the consistency it takes. Yep. SZA has all of it right now. All yeah. those pistons yeah. are pumping together. She's so unique. Um, her style, 
Just everything about her, man. Mm-hmm. I'm a. I couldn't be a bigger fan. She's amazing. Okay, before you go, Childish Gambino. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Um, that guy to me, Donald is. He's a. You can't put him in a category. No. no he's more. a renaissance man, right? Right. He does. Yeah. He does everything, and he does everything well. Uh huh. Um, he really does. Um, by the way, uh, brother, I'm trying to reach you. I was. I've been, no, I'm, I'm, I'm actually. I am trying to reach him because there was something I wanted to holler at him at him about regarding the Grammys. Uh huh. And I. So I'm just saying it because I know everybody listens to your show. So I'm just saying it. You know, try to get hit me. You know, hit my Instagram, DM me, somebody, okay. management, somebody. Okay. What, just, what do you want to talk to him about? I can't say. I can't say. I just. Okay. I just have. I'm. 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 A, here. Here's the way I think about it. Um. I kind of. Um. Uh. We particularly after we lost Prince. Yeah. But we lost so many, we've lost so many artists, right? Yeah. I've always made it a point to win, and it doesn't matter whether they're new artists, old artists, doesn't matter. I reach out to everybody I can when I get the chance, mm-hmm. and I let them know that I love what they're doing. Or if I feel like there's something I could, some knowledge I could impart on them or whatever, I just do it. Yeah. Whether they want to hear it or not, I don't really yeah. care because I'm like, I'm still here. Mm-hmm. And it's like when you, Heather, when you talk about living legend, the living part is the good part. Yep. The legend part, okay, fine, that takes care of itself, I guess. But the living part, if I'm living and I know something, I have a nugget of knowledge that I can share with somebody, I want to try to get in touch with that person and tell them that. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, okay. I ran into, I ran into, not to go off subject, I ran into Rodney Jerkins the other day at, at the mall in L.A. Uh-huh. And just out of the blue. And I'll never forget when the first time I heard, speaking of Mary J. Blige, Share My World, the song mm-hmm. Share My yeah. World. And I remember I called, there was a guy named Lul Silas, uh-huh. rest in peace, Lul. I called Lul. I said, who's this brother Rodney Jerkins? And he said, oh, yeah, he's a kid, you know, blah, blah, blah. I said, do you know him? He said, I'm in the studio with him right now. I wow. said, put him on the phone. Uh-huh. <laughs> I said, brother, these chords on this song, man, I said, this is amazing, man. I said, you don't know me. I said, I don't know you, but I'm just going to tell you. This is amazing stuff. And we talk about that story all the time. He says that meant so much to me. He said, because you, you didn't know who I was and whatever. I make it a point to do that. So now that I'm an old guy, I really make a point of doing that, right? Okay. So I have something that I need to tell this brother that I just want to shout out to him. And I've gone through management, I've gone through whatever, and ain't been able to actually reach him. I call Quest, Quest, you got enough, because Quest is the Rolodex. He yeah, got yeah. everybody's Quest number, everybody right? Quest's got everybody in Quest Love. Right? And so, uh, anyway, We're going to put so, it out. We're going to put, put, so put this on Donald, my Donald, Go ahead, sis. Glover, just, you know, hit my, hit my Instagram, Flight Time Jam. There it is. I'm gonna just put it on, DM me. I'm going to post it today. Yeah, this, this clip and then put it, put up. it just out, just brother. There. I need, I need one, I need one minute of your time, two minutes of your time. That's all I need. I'm not going to waste your He's time. He's performing though, right? He is performing. Yeah, absolutely. So, so you absolutely. bump into him? No, I'll see, him, I'll okay. see him at the rehearsal, but I want to see him before the rehearsal. Okay, we're yeah. going to let it happen. Jimmy yeah. Jam, thank you, man, for blessing our airway. Thank right. you, man. Thanks, all right, man. It's always Thanks, great y'all. for you come in here, man. Thanks, y'all. We, we had a great okay. conversation uh, not too long ago. Yes, we did. And so, congratulations on everything. We got Robert Glasper in here today. Robert is amazing, mm-hmm. and um, by the way, have you heard the version of Optimistic that he's involved with, with Common mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and Brandy and them, and uh, and Kareem Riggins, and oh my God! Yeah, he yeah he, he's invited me to the studio, but we can't get beyond the cracking jokes. <laughs> <laughs> we should be a stand that up brother comedian. Funny. Yeah. That brother's funny. <laughs> right? Robert is funny. How uh, talented is that brother? Oh, uh, he's amazing. But to- so nice to hear. Optimist, that song op- optimistic. When people ask our favorite song we've ever written, it's that song. Uh-huh. So to hear a new take on that, particularly yeah. in these times that we're living with, yeah. we need to have that song in our lives right now. So we appreciate that. Well, and, and, and but you know, from every every ending has a beginning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And let's play the original. The All right, okay. Jimmy Jam, right. thank you for coming. <laughs> wow, did I say? Oh, yeah. Wow. Damn. So we do here, Jimmy Jam, ladies and gentlemen. Amazing. We're gonna got DJ Wonder in the mix up next, and then after that, we're going live with Robert Glasper, Anthony Hamilton, the Hamiltons, Vina Love, Talib Kweli, Lupe, yo. It's Sway in the morning only from Shade Forty Five.